December 27th, 10 a.m. District Court, courtroom number three. The court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Miles Edgeworth. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Very well, apparently the prosecution is also ready. Who's the judge here, anyway? Mr. Von Karma, your opening statement. Uh, very well, no opening statements, so... Not so fast, judge. I was taking a meaningful pause before speaking. R right, of course. A prediction. Today's trial will end three minutes from now. Order! Order! Mr. Von Karma, what is the meaning of your statement just now? Bah, must you question everything? It will be over in three minutes. We have no time to waste. I'll call my witness now. R right. I call my witness, my decisive witness to the stand. It's that mysterious boat shop owner. Witness, state your profession. Oh, what was his voice? Mm. I, uh, I'm the proprietor of the rest restaurant, The Wet Noodle at Gold Lake. I think that was his voice. And I uh, also rent boats. Night of the incident, we were in the boat rental shop, correct? Uh, yep, yep I was. Please testify. Wait a second. I still haven't heard who this old guy is. Objection. OBJECTION! Wait a minute! The witness hasn't stated his name yet! Because I did not ask him, Mr. Wright, but I have predicted this trial will end in three minutes. Stop asking trivial questions and cooperate. Yeah, right. The witness will state his name. Well, uh, I'm not really sure. Yep. What do you mean? My, uh, memory. Your Honor, the witness does not remember anything beyond the last several years. Ergo, he cannot recall his own name. Hmm, he can't recall, you say? Yes, but the incident in question took place three days ago. He can testify. Very well. Let's hear his testimony then, shall we? Witness? The night of the murder. It was the night of the 24th, just after midnight. Yep. I was in the restaurant, where I, uh, rent boats, as usual. And I heard a bang. Yep. When I looked out the window, I saw a boat just floating on the lake. Then I heard another bang. Just about then, the boat comes back to shore, and a man walks by my window. Hmm, very well. I'd like to begin the cross-examination. There is nothing to question in my witness's testimony. Ergo, no need for cross-examination. Besides, there are only ten seconds left before our three minutes are up. Judge, your verdict, now. Uh. Yes. Mr. Wright? What are you saying? Of course I cross-examine the witness. Hmm, very well, you may begin. Excuse me? Mr. Von Karma? Three minutes just passed. I see. Well then, let's just take our time. What kind of prediction was that? Come on, obviously we're going to cross-examine the witness. <laughs> you may cross-examine the witness. Cross-examination. Just after midnight, you say? Hey up, just around then. Are you sure? Pretty sure, yep. When I talked to you yesterday, you were rather vague about the time. 
I'm surprised you seem so sure about it today. I asked him, and he remembered. Isn't that right? But don't glare at me like that. I, uh, I remembered it clearly, I did. Yeah, yup. You see? You see? Continue. <laughs> Is there anyone who can verify that? Well, I guess Polly could. That's not good enough for a court of law. Mr. Wright, exactly what's not good enough? Uh, uh, Your Honor, this Polly is a parrot. A parrot? Don't be so hard on the girl, Keithy boy. Keith? The prosecution concedes that we cannot prove the witness was in the shop. Witness, please continue. And where did the bang seem to come from? From the lake, I figure. Are you certain? Uh, hey, up. Good. Continue. Was there someone in the boat? It was pretty far out there. I couldn't see clearly. But I figure there was there was two men out there. Hey, yeah, up. But you couldn't see them clearly. Hey, up. At the time, that is. At the time? So you heard two gunshots total? Hey, up. That's what Lotta said in her testimony yesterday. By your window? Hey, up. By my window. Right outside the window of my little shack. And could you see the man's face? Well, the fog was pretty darn thick, but he was right there in front of me. I saw him. This is a rather important detail. Please add it to your testimony. <laughs> tisk, 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 tisk. <laughs> I have a bad feeling about this. I know it's supposed to be any of a laugh, but Tisk is not a laugh, so... That man was- that man was the defendant. He was saying, I can't believe he's dead. Uh, are you sure? Uh-oh. dad Dead certain Keith. He said, I can't believe he's dead as he was walking by, too. Witness, are you sure that the person you saw was Miles Edgeworth? It was him. That Edgeworth boy. This sounds like the size of evidence indeed. I see no room for doubt. One karma. He lured me into cross-examining so he could set up me up for a fall. <laughs> I, I know it says Tisk, but that's not a laugh. That's not an evil laugh. <laughs> Nick, I don't like the way things are going here. Everyone in the courtroom is glaring at us. I better act quick or this trial is going to be over. Objection. Your Honor, we proved in yesterday's trial that it could not have been Edgeworth who fired that gun. Mr. Wright, are you referring to fingerprints from Edgeworth's right hand found on the gun? And the photograph showing a man firing with his left hand? Exactly. That is easily explainable. He could have wiped his prints after he fired. You're ignoring the truth of the matter here. Everything in this witness's testimony is true. Hmm. The judge is lost in thought. What should I do? Objection! Your Honor, this witness claims that Edgeworth said, I can't believe he's dead. But his word is all we have. 
If you were telling a lie... Mr. Wright, in a court of law, the evidence tells all. Apparently, you've yet to realize even this basic fact. If you say his testimony is a lie, show us proof. Ugh. I mean, no one's shown any proof that his testimony is true. So... <laughs> Nick, do we have evidence? It's no good. There's nothing I can do. Ah, uh, are you sure? To be honest, I don't know what to do anymore. Please. Can you hear me, sis? Please. We need your help. Nick needs you. <laughs> Three minutes was perhaps too high an expectation. However, 15 minutes isn't bad. This must be a new record. Enough. The witness may leave the stand. This court sees no reason to further prolong the trial. Nor is there any need for more time to decide the case against the defendant. This case is extremely clear. I see no room for misinterpretation of the facts. W what? No! Hmm. This court finds the defendant, Mr. Miles Edgeworth. The accused will surrender the court immediately. To be held pending trial at a higher court within a month from today's date. That is all. This court is adjourned. W w wait! Who else saw this coming? <laughs> Who was that just now? Me! Huh? What? Larry? <laughs> what are you doing here? Listen, y you gotta listen to me. I... I was... I was there in the park the night of the murder. I... I wasn't sure about it until just yesterday. But uh, today I remembered it. Remembered what? The gunshot. I heard it too. Order. What is the meaning of this? Verdict has been decided. I call for adjournment. One moment, Mr. Von Karma. So, you say you heard a gunshot? Yeah, I did. A gunshot. That night. I was sitting here in the audience, listening to the testimony. And I realised that something he said was different than what I remember. But anyhow. I can't just let you sit here. I can't just sit here and let you call Edgy a murderer. It's... it's just not right. I'll testify. Let me testify. Order. Order. Well, this is the first time something has happened like this in my court. Um... No, it isn't. That something like this happens in every case that you've ever done. <laughs> I'm not quite sure how to proceed. Judge, you've already given your decision. The trial is over. Nick! This is it! Larry's given us one final chance at this! She's right. If only it wasn't Larry. He could make things even worse. Mr. Edgeworth would just declared guilty, Nick! It doesn't get any worse. I mean, it doesn't get any worse. Get is the emphasized word there. Y you're right. Uh, okay. Your Honor, if there is another witness, it is our duty to hear him speak. Right here, right now. A waste of time. The verdict cannot be overturned. Hmm. Allow me to speak my opinion. In all court proceedings, it is our duty to prevent an inaccurate verdict. In order to make sure no mistake has been made, every witness should be heard. W what is this? I withdraw my previous verdict of guilty. Mr. Von Karma, I order you to call this new witness to testify. Now. What? The court will adjourn for a five minute recess. 
After that, we will hear this new witness. Court is adjourned. December 27, 1028 AM, District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 2. So yeah, it's been just about half an hour since the trial started t for today. And we got Edgeworth declared guilty already, so that's not great. <laughs> Whew. That was too close. Sorry to keep you on the edge of your seat like that, Edgeworth. Hmm. I've seen worse. Yeah, right, Edgeworth. You're sweating bullets. I just wonder what Larry plans to say in there. Larry was at the lake that night. Sorry, Larry was at the lake that night? <laughs> I said that with the wrong inflection entirely the first time. <laughs> yes. He said he went looking for the steel samurai balloon that flew into the lake. Oh, right. And he found the balloon in the air tank that night. That night? She's, she's, she's questioning. Gotta, gotta put a question into your voice, Danny. <laughs> in the air tank that night? Yeah. Hey, Edgeworth. Huh? You say something, right? Yeah, a lot of things. You seem out of it. What's wrong? It... it's nothing. Hmm? Um, Mr. Edgeworth, there's something I've been meaning to ask you. What's that? Why are your fingerprints on the murder weapon? Oh. When he fell into the lake, I went into a daze. I couldn't understand what had happened. I couldn't think straight. And I saw the pistol lying on the floor of the boat in front of me. I picked it up without thinking. Edgeworth, please. <laughs> Why would you do that? I didn't have a reason, really. Oh, okay, fair enough. <laughs> I see. Right. Yeah? This might be our chance. Our, our chance? Von Karma has only ever run perfect trials. Perfect trials? Perfectly prepared witnesses, perfectly complete evidence. That's the secret to his success. This is the first time he's ever had to deal with something unexpected. He has to let someone he hasn't even talked to testify before the court. And that someone is Larry. What are you getting at? It's likely his testimony will be full of holes, right? That's right, Nick. No ten minute trial this time. We'll milk this one for all it's worth. Hey, it was fifteen minutes. Fifteen. Everything's on Larry now. December 27, 10.35 a.m. District Court, courtroom number three. Court is now back in session. Witness. Please testify to the court about everything that you saw on the night of December 24th. Right, leave it to me. Please, Larry, don't mess this one up. I hate to admit it, but you're our last chance. When Carmen didn't even have time to prep his witness. I just hope Edgeworth is right about this being a big break. The night of the murder. That night, I was out in a boat on the lake. I was looking for something, and I, uh, found it. So I quietly slipped the boat back in at the rental shop dock. Then, just as I was thinking about going home, I heard this bang. I looked out over the lake, but I didn't see a boat. So after I heard that single gunshot, I went home. Hmm. That was an unusually vague testimony, even for this court. In any case, Mr. Wright, you may be going across examination. Yes, Your Honor. What's wrong, Nick? It's Larry. I have no idea what he's going to say if I press him. I'm a little scared. Hmm. Well, we've come this far. There's no way to go but forward, Nick. The night of the murder. Okay, let's get pressing. Hold it. Hold it. 
something wrong, Mr. Wright? There are so many things wrong, I don't know where to begin. Ah. Um, well, okay. First of all, what time was it? Oh, it was after 11 when I went out, when I went out in the boat. By that time, everyone had gone home for the night. So I waited until the coast was clear, so to speak. And why were you out on a boat at such a late hour? Looking for something? Uh, yeah. Mr. Butts, what was it you were looking for? What the witness was searching for is irrelevant. Most likely he was hunting for this Gordy. That's surprisingly close to the truth, in a sense. This is all irrelevant. Let's get it over with. Around what time was that? Uh, well, let's see. I figure I was out searching for about an hour. I guess it was around 12? Yeah. You're not sure? Hey, don't give me that face. I'm not some sort of human sundial, okay? People use watches these days, Larry. Where did the sound come from? Yeah, well, I wasn't too sure about that. I looked around, you know. Did you look at the lake? Yeah, I looked. Wasn't there a boat on the lake? Order, order. Well, Mr. Butts. Whoa, whoa. Everybody just calm down, okay? I mean, it was real foggy that night. I'm not sure whether there was a boat out there or not. Oh, okay, no problem. That's just the most important part of this case. Hmm. So I only heard one bang, correct? Yeah. Huh. Well, Nick? Hmm. It was a pretty wishy-washy testimony, wasn't it? I guess I should just start working on the contradictions. Sorry. I wish I could be more helpful. I wish I could call my sister. Alright, so the contradiction here is that Larry only heard one gunshot, right? Whereas if you look at Lotta's deposition and the boat shop caretaker's deposition, there were two sounds like gunshots. And the gun was fired three times. So, Larry clearly heard something a bit different um, to what everyone else was hearing. So, let's Objection. object and see what we can find out. W wait a sec, Larry. W what? You only heard one bang? You're sure? That's what I said. But Ms. Lotta testified yesterday that she heard two bangs. And that old man just now said the same thing. They both heard two gunshots that night. Huh? Were you even listening? Were you paying attention at all to what they said? Phoenix, lay off. Like, Larry actually did only hear one gunshot. What is wrong with you? <laughs> Yo, Nick, please. Huh? You know, something's been bothering me. I'm a witness, see? I'm like a customer here. So you gotta treat me nice and stuff, okay? Mr. Butts. What? You only heard one gunshot, are you sure? Um... Well, to tell you the truth, I'm not sure. Huh? Not sure? Uh, how could you not be sure? Yeah, well, I, uh, I might have missed the other gunshot. I was, uh, listening to something else. Something else? My radio, dude, with my headphones. What? Order, order, and stop that booing. M Mr. Butts, you were listening to the radio with your headphones? Y yeah, so what? Is that crime? I listen to my radio. Everybody listens to the radio. What's the big deal? 
Uh, well, I mean, I think we'd probably just play some music off our smartphones these days, but all right. Hmm. Mr. Von Karma, your opinion? Waste of time. I do not accept this witness, nor his shoddy testimony. Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, should he continue the testimony? Your Honor, please, please allow the witness to continue his testimony. Bah. Nothing is more pitiful than a lawyer who doesn't know when he's lost. Very well, Mr. Butts. Please give the te your testimony and be sure to include details like your radio. R right, leave it to me. I wouldn't if there were any other way out of this, believe me. What Larry heard. It's lonely being alone on Christmas Eve. That's why I was listening to an all-request show on the radio, see? I was listening to it real booming loud, like. But I'm sure I heard that gunshot. I remember exactly what the DJ was saying when I heard it, too. You were listening to your radio at a high volume? Yeah, what's the big problem? Can't a man listen to his radio in peace? Isn't this a free country? I truly believe Larry has no idea what the problem here is. Judge, can you believe a word this witness says? <laughs> what he heard was probably nothing more than a drumbeat from the radio. True enough, it is difficult to believe this testimony. Objection! Wait, Your Honor. The witness said he remembers exactly what the DJ said when he heard the gunshot. Excuse me? DJ? An announcer, the, the guy who says things on the radio. Anyway, what this means is when he heard the sound, no music was playing. The DJ only talks between songs, so he could have heard the gunshot from the lake. I'd like to cross-examine the witness, Your Honor. Very well, Mr. Wright. I can't believe I'm continuing this charade. Alright, so we want to know what the DJ was saying, because it's actually quite important. So we're going to scroll to the end here. What did she say? She? Alright, I mean, no one needs to use any pronouns for the DJ until right here, so this is... Alright. <laughs> Mr. Wright, please cease these pointless questions. What possible good could knowing what a radio DJ said do us? Indeed, Mr. Von Karma has a point. I'll allow the question only if you see some reason why we should care. We should care, Your Honor. Of course we should. Why? Uh. Well, how do you know if we? How do you know if we don't ask? Hmm. Fine. Very well. Mr. Butts, please testify to the court. What was the radio announcer saying when you heard the gunshot? Just when she said, "Hey, it's almost Christmas," I heard the gunshot. Now. If we look at Lotta's testimony again, Lotta heard two sounds like gunshots just after midnight, which means it was already Christmas. <laughs> this is probably one of the most like famous contradictions in the whole series. <laughs> Larry, are you absolutely sure what you're saying is correct? Huh? What's with the face? You look scary, dude. Hey, if you're trying to scare me, you better know I don't scare that easy. Is something the matter, Mr. Wright? Your Honor, do you hear what the witness just said? The DJ said, hey, it's almost Christmas when he heard the gunshot. Indeed. Indeed. And? Almost Christmas means it wasn't Christmas. <laughs> do you realise what this means? When he heard the gunshot, it was still Christmas Eve. That would seem to be the case, yes. That contradicts the two testimonies we've heard so far, Your Honor. Both Ms. Hart and the old man said it was after midnight when they heard the shots. In other words, when they heard the gunshots, it was already Christmas. This is a clear contradiction, Your Honor. Order, order. What does this mean? The two prior witnesses heard gunshots after midnight. However, this witness says he heard a gunshot before midnight. Judge, the answer is simple. The current witness is plainly mistaken. 
just look at him. Suspicious. But what? Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, what do you think about Mr. Butt's claim you heard the gunshot before midnight? He absolutely did. Larry's not mistaken, Your Honor. He heard that gunshot before midnight. Intriguing. I'm assuming you have evidence for this wild claim. Show me evidence there was a gunshot before midnight. We actually do have evidence. Uh, if we look through our evidence here, we have a second lake photo, which was taken before midnight, which means there must have been a loud sound before midnight to create this photograph. <laughs> look at this photograph. <laughs> look at this photograph. This was taken by our witness yesterday, Ms. Lotta Hart, with her automatic camera. The timestamp on the photo reads December 24th, 11.50pm. Oh? Hmm. But there's nothing on the lake in on the lake in this picture. Your Honor, the real issue here is not why nothing is shown in this photograph. It is why this photograph exists at all. What do you mean? Your Honor, this photograph was taken by an automatic camera. That camera was set to go off in response to loud noises. Aha! Uh -huh. Correct. There was a loud noise on the lake at 11.50pm. That is why this photograph was taken. In other words, when Larry heard that gunshot, it was most definitely still Christmas Eve. Indeed, it would seem that is the case. Then, where does that leave us? Miss Hart testified that she heard the gunshots after midnight. Are you claiming she was mistaken? Not at all, Your Honor. It is a fact that the camera also triggered 15 minutes after midnight. Your Honor, that night there were two sets of gunshots with a 25 minute pause between them. Why would this be? Don't be fooled, Judge. That camera was set to respond to loud noises. Yes? There is no proof that the loud noise at 11.50 was a gunshot. Why, the witness could have sneezed triggering the camera. Hey, my nose was clear that night, man. Clear! Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, there's no turning back now. Can you prove that the loud noise at 11.50pm was indeed a gunshot? Please show the court evidence if you have any. Uh, yeah, actually. Uh, if we have a look at... The gun, we know it fired three times. Therefore... That's where the first firing came from. This is my evidence. The murder weapon? Something about this pistol was bothering me, Your Honor. Both of the witnesses who testified yesterday heard two gunshots. However, the murder weapon was fired three times. When, then, was the last shot fired? Only now have I realised the truth. That third shot was the shot Larry heard just before midnight. Order! Order! Hmm. That would make sense of the evidence we've seen so far. However, this leaves me wondering exactly what did happen that night on the lake. Exactly. If this is true, there were two sets of gunshots separated by 25 minutes. One at 11.50, another at 15 minutes after midnight. Why, I ask you, why? Uh-oh, better think of something quick. Wait a second. Gunshots separated by 25 minutes. Ah! But what's wrong, Nick? I have it. I have it. Huh? Remember the case with the Steel Samurai? Huh? Yeah, of course I remember. The murderer in this case had the same idea as the murderer in that case. What do you mean? Maya. Yes? If we don't figure this out now, we'll never overturn Edgeworth's guilty verdict. I've got a hunch, and I'm gonna run with it. Right, I mean, is this safe? Safe? We've already gotten a guilty verdict, we have nothing to lose. You just watch and let me know if I say anything that sounds fishy, okay? Right, Nick. Your Honor. Yes, Mr. Wright? The testimony just now has cleared up this entire case. What do you mean, Mr. Wright? 
<laughs> so, you finally realize the truth? There can be no other murderer here than Miles Edgeworth himself. Wrong, Von Karma. A man was shot that night, but it wasn't Edgeworth who did the shooting. Listen, Rocky. Take a deep breath and consider the facts. At the time of the murder, one boat was on that lake. This was shown by the witness's photograph. The defendant, Edgeworth, and the victim, Robert Hammond, were on that boat. There was a gunshot fired on that boat, and Robert Hammond fell into the lake. The distance of the shooting was one metre. It couldn't have been suicide. Well, the guilty party has to be the other man on that boat. I admit, it is hard to imagine any other possibility. Yes. But this assumes that the victim was shot at 15 minutes after midnight. What do you mean by that, Mr. Wright? We have photographic evidence of the time of the shooting. The timestamp on the photo says... 0015. But Larry heard a gunshot 25 minutes before that. Robert Hammond was killed then, 25 minutes before the shot on the lake. That's the only way that Edgeworth could be innocent. Mr. Wright, are you quite mad? Explain who the two men on the boat are. Edgeworth and the murderer. Of course, it was Edgeworth and the murderer. After the murderer killed Robert Hammond at 11.50, he assumed the guise of Mr. Hammond and met Edgeworth. Wh what Are you serious? Yes, Edgeworth won't tell us why he went to the lake that night. However, I have a hunch. That night, Robert Hammond called Edgeworth to the lake. Now, Edgeworth didn't know Robert Hammond's face that well. That's why he didn't suspect anything when the murderer took Robert Hammond's place. I'm not sure what to make of all this. L ludicrous. Mr. Wright? Tell us the name of the murderer, then. The murderer's name? Right, it's... Actually, I don't know the murderer's name. Y you don't know? Bah, again, you waste my time. I don't know because he never told us. The murderer is the caretaker of the boat shop, that old man. At 11.50, he was the one who killed Robert Hammond. The caretaker of the boat shop? W where did he do this? There weren't any boats in the lake then. Why would he have to go all the way out in the lake just to shoot someone? May I suggest the real scene of this crime was not on a boat? What? Well, well then, where did the murder take place? Well, may as well do it inside your boat shop where no one can see you. <laughs> Here, of course, the boat shop where he lives. That way he could meet with the victim without anyone seeing. Do you have proof that the boat shop was the scene of the crime? Recall Larry's testimony, if you will. That night he was out on the lake in a boat, searching for something. He finds it and returns the boat. Then, just as he's starting to head for home, he hears a gunshot. He heard a gunshot, Your Honor, even though he was wearing headphones at the time. In other words, the gunshot was very, very close by. And where would that be if he just returned a boat? The boat shop. <laughs> Mr. Wright, what happened that night on Gord Lake? Please tell the court from the beginning. Y yes, Your Honor. Nick, are you sure about this? Um, not really. But I think if I start at the very beginning, and I take it slow, I might just be able to figure this out. That night, the caretaker of the boat shop called Robert Hammond to his shop. This was around 11.50. That was when the gunshot that Larry heard was fired. After that, the caretaker put on Robert Hammond's coat. He became Robert Hammond. 
Then he got into the boat with Edgeworth and went out, in, went out into the middle of the lake. Then who fired the pistol on the boat, Mr. Wright? Of course, it was the murderer who shot the pistol. He shot twice. Both missed Edgeworth. On purpose. Wait a minute. Y yes Why would he shoot twice if he didn't mean to hit anyone? Uh, details, details. Know this, Mr. Wright. The moment you run out of explanation is the moment you lose. Tell us why the murderer had to fire twice. I believe he shot twice to create a witness, Your Honor. Create a witness? The murderer lifts his pistol and fires one shot. That ensures that anyone who heard the shot would look at the lake. Indeed, Ms. Hart did exactly that after hearing the first gunshot. Next. The murderer waits a bit and he fires again. Then. The murderer jumps from the boat himself, leaving the pistol on the boat behind him. I see. For someone looking from the edge of the lake, it would appear that one of the men on the boat had shot the other. The murderer didn't know about the automatic camera, of course. That's why he shot twice, to draw attention to the boat. Hmm. Once you realise that, everything else falls into place. The boat shop caretaker swam back to his shop. Then he put Mr. Hammond's wet coat back on the body, and threw the body into the lake. This is what happened, Your Honour. These are the evidence that transpired that night on Gord Lake. Bailiff. Bring out the witness from before. The boat shop caretaker, quickly! Very well, while we are waiting for the caretaker, I would like to ask the defendant, Miles Edgeworth, a few questions. Mr. Edgeworth, please take the stand. Mr. Edgeworth, you heard what the defense has said? Yes. Well? Why did you go to the lake that night? What Ryder said was mostly correct. Astonishingly so, actually. Yes. Several days ago, I received a letter. The letter was signed, Robert Hammond. He asked me to come to the boat shop by the lake at midnight on Christmas Eve. He said he had something very important to discuss with me. Something important? I'm sorry, I can't say what it was. Hmm... Your Honor, sir. Bailiff, we're conducting a trial here. I ask that you remain quiet. The witness has disappeared. He isn't at the boat shop either. What? What should I do? F find him, quickly. We cannot allow him to get away. Mr. Von Karma, your witness has disappeared. A search warrant has already been issued. Hmm. It goes without saying that I cannot declare a verdict under these circumstances. I will extend the trial until tomorrow, the final day allowed. I request that the police department utilise all its forces to find that witness. Am I understood? One more thing. Just who is that boat shop caretaker? I think his identity has become very important to this trial. I want him. I want to know who he is. Very well. Court is adjourned. December 27, 1.22pm, District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 2. Yay, Nick, you did it! Yeah. Well, at least we got out from under that guilty verdict. And what about Larry? That was something else. Even Von Karma didn't know what to do with his testimony. Larry really helped us out. Sure, once I sifted through his unique testimony. Still, he did save us. I just wish our cases weren't so down to the wire all the time. I know what you mean. Sometimes I feel like it's us on trial instead of our clients. Hey, Edgeworth. Um, Mr. Edgeworth? Did, did you say something? Don't look so pained. I mean, it looks like you're probably gonna get off the hook. Get off the hook. You could try to smile just a little. Relax. I'm sorry. 
but I fear it's not over for me yet. What do you mean? Right. There's something that's been troubling me for a long time now, and I don't know whether or not to tell you. Edgeworth? No, there's so little time left. I want to tell you, to get it off my chest, but... Hmm, I can't make up my mind. What is this about, Edgeworth? It's... a nightmare I've had. A memory of a crime that I committed. A crime you committed? A memory of a murder. To be continued. <laughs> oh my goodness. So, uh, that's, uh, that's Turnabout Goodbye's Day 3 trial done. Uh, look forward to the Day 3 investigation in the next episode. And thank you for watching. Bye!